So my next project is a series of cabinets and the middle is going to fit a double oven that is recessed into the wall and this is going into an existing space almost the size of a closet there's a wall on either end so it's going to function quite similar to a built-in I'm going to build it quite similar to how I would a built-in and as well as be installed um, like a built-in because this is smaller than the space so there'll be um, trim on either side to fill in that space I wasn't going to film this project because I've done plenty of videos on cabinets making doors. Um, I believe I have a video on there of making drawers. But upon working out some of the existing problems with the customer, I kind of found out that there are standardized sizings for these ovens. Um, for the most part, people recommend that the top of the oven is 64 inches above the ground, and that means that it sits about 12 inches to 15 inches off of the ground. So once I kind of found out that there's um, a standard way to do this, I thought since um, it might help people not necessarily just making cabinets, but how to install um, cabinets to hold the oven. Now the customer is um, a DIYer, so I believe they're installing the oven themselves, so I won't be showing that part of the video, but if um, I will be showing how to make this to be able to fit one of those. And from what I can tell of, because he pulled an oven out of the space, is that it's kind of like a plop and plug sort of situation. I believe it's electric setup, so it's not like you have to run gas or anything, so there'll probably just be some holes going to the oven and he said he could drill them himself. Other than that, a couple things um, specialized for this job is since he pulled an oven out of the space, and it's an older oven, which is why he couldn't just keep the setup he already had. Newer styles won't fit in there. There's already an existing platform that's four inches high, which is perfect because that's how I would have started this project. I don't have to make that. The other thing is, is his house, an architect used to live there, and the architect kind of designed and made a lot of the parts of the kitchen, so he asked if I could reuse the doors for the bottom set. There's going to be uh, pull-out drawers down here, but then open, open doors up top. So I have those two sets of, of paneling, and they're very, very simple doors. It's basically just plywood that he trimmed out with, it might be poplar or some sort of um, country maple, something like that. And it's just um, a higher grade maple veneer ply, which is great because I could easily get that at my local store. So that these doors, I actually reverse and I'm putting them on their sides, which will be the pull-out drawers, and then these are the top drawers. Now since I was working with existing panels, the top drawers are going to have to have a face frame to make up for the discrepancy of this opening. However, this cabinet and this cabinet are going to be frameless style, so the edges will just be veneered and the doors will come up to the whole edge on either side of this which means I'm going to be making this in two parts. This bottom cabinet will be one part, and this top cabinet will be another part. It also makes moving these pieces around easier if you make this almost 8 feet tall, and it's going to be 25.5 inches deep by 30 and a half inches wide. It's going to be really hard to move by yourself. So cabinetry to me at this stage in the game is pretty simple. So what I'm going to do to start is since I already have that 4 inch base and I want the top of this level to be at 60 inches, pretty simple. I'm just going to cut two 60 inch panels for my sides. And he asked me to make all of the dimensions for the inner part of this a half inch bigger than what is on the website, as well as he asked that it was two inches deeper than the recommendation on the website just so that if something like this happens down the line or the stove or the oven breaks again he can um, doesn't have to be limited by what would fit in here so he sent me a link to the website which has the dimensions for the cutout which is where it's going so I just added two inches to my depth which gave me 25.5 and then a half inch to my height and I rounded this instead of using um, an odd 
an odd angle, an odd number there, and same with the width. So I came up with my new dimensions for the cutout, and that is where I got my 25.5 depth. That's kind of a bummer number just because since standard ply comes in four foot sheets, anything over two feet means um, I can't cut both of these sides out of one sheet. So I'm going to automatically have to get two sheets just to make the sides. This is the stack of lumber I got the other day from the store. It's um, maple veneer ply to match what is already in his kitchen. And this sheet goes to something else. For the backer of this, I'm using half inch maple veneer ply. Um, a lot of times on my built-ins on smaller cabinets, I'll use quarter inch because you don't need um, a ton of structure on smaller cabinetry. But since that oven is going to be holding a fair amount of weight and it won't have any shelves or partitions to help with racking, I wanted a super strong back, so I went with half inch. So I'm going to take two of these sheets rip them down to 25.5 and then um, cross cut them to 60 inches. I have my two rough cutouts and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be cutting a rabbit on the top and the bottom of each piece which will take the top and the bottom of that inner cabinet. I'm be cutting a half inch rabbit on the back for my backer board and then I'm also once those are done I'm going to measure down and cut a dado across the middle to separate that bottom cabinet from where the oven is going. So to start cutting all those, I put a sacrificial fence on my table saw fence. cut those rabbits on either end of my piece and then I have a fairly big recess in this sacrificial fence so I'm just sliding it over to only expose about a half inch of the blade which is the thickness of my plywood so that half inch will cut um, the half inch groove which accounts for my backer board and that is the thickness of my backer board so now I could send these through two pieces through and trim off just that back edge. So that is what that groove in the back looks like, and that will be where uh, my backer, my half inch backer, fits in. Then. I laid these panels out like a book, as if you could turn the page, so that when they're on edge you could see how the backs will be up in the air in the rear, and then I traced my line for the groove for the, the shelf between the oven and the bottom drawer. I always like to lay my panels out like that, especially if I cut the backs already, because if you have a stack of them and you go to line them up, it can get really confusing, and if you accidentally put these on the same side of your panels, they won't match up. So in order to get this original mark, since my opening here has to be 54 and a quarter, all I did was take a measure and measure from my inside lip down to 54 and a quarter. And then it's going to be about a three-quarter inch uh, piece of plywood. It's that uh, 2330 seconds, but I measured it at three-quarter. And now I took my sacrificial fence off my fence since this isn't at the edge of a piece. I'm just going to rip that dado, and then I can make my three shelves 
cut my backer and start assembling these. I'm going to need three shelves for this bottom cabinet and I'm using the two cutoffs from those end sheets of plywood. Um, they'll have to be trimmed because these won't go all the way to the back so I'll have to cut like a half inch off of them but they're close to the right size. They're just a little long. So what I did since I want to cut the grooves in these for the center piece before I change out my stack I had to do a little bit of math. So I usually don't um, get uh, crazy with deciding the depth of the cuts for my dados and rabbits. I just kind of line it up usually about halfway through the piece. These are about um, 5 sixteenths deep. So the inside of my cabinet has to be 29 inches. So I came over from my edge 5 sixteenths, measured 29 right here, and then there'll be another 5 sixteenths, so this will be waste. 5 sixteenths on either edge will mark where um, this will sink into that dado I cut on my piece. And then the half mark of 29 is 14 and a half. And then I put 3 eighths of an inch on either side to get any of that rough 3 quarters. So now I have a mark. I could set my fence and slide both of these shelves through to give me identical marks for that center piece on these uh, bottom part of these cabinets. cut in my shelves. I can now cut these down to size because I switched out my dado stack for my cross cutting blade in my saw and these are going to be a little over 29 inches and the measurement gauge on my saw only goes to 26 so instead what I'm going to do is cut off this side and this is 6 and 3 eighths and that will give me what I want. So I'm going to trim the excess off of both of these and then I'm going to need another piece to go on top of everything but I had to buy three sheets of plywood because like I said that one measurement is over 24 inches so I had to get three in order to get three sheets of 25 which is what I need to make everything so out of that one extra sheet I could slice off a little bit and use it for this. my three panels cut and right now they, they're exact same width of all the other panels I cut because they're the ends from those pieces but what I want is I want them to be the same width as from the front of my cabinet to this back edge not the back of the cabinet so that when I put my back in there it will sit against the top, the bottom, and the shelf. I don't want the shelf to extend into my backer because then I'd have to cut it into multiple pieces. So I'm going to take get this measurement and just slice off. It's going to be about a half inch off of all those panels. my pile of pieces and now I'm going to dry fit this together and the nice thing about cabinets nine out of ten times if you're making a built-in or kitchen cabinets the sides won't be seen they'll either be covered on either side by other cabinets or a wall um, there's a show side in most kitchens and you could put um, a panel over it or keep one side clean but if the panels are going to be hidden, that means that I can connect these with screws, not have to rely on clamps, and get it um, pretty rigid right off the bat and the glue up. 
So what I do for that is I pre-drill a little hole through my groove so I know it's going to go through all my panels perfectly. I flip it over to the other side and then countersink those holes. So now I can dry fit this whole thing together with screws and then measure for that middle partition and metal, um, measure for the back, fit those, take it apart, and then glue everything together. There's that cabinet together, and this is looking at it from the back side. You could see um, the rabbit and then how the panels don't go all the way to the back. So I just measured in a I just measured in the front and the back my width to make sure they're identical as well as my length. And the back I need to cut is going to be 29 and 5 8 by 59 and 7 8 and 29 and 5 8 is the exact same width of my panels, which is what it should be. And then I came over here and I measured um, from the inside of both my grooves to so that center partition. And this scrap I had from the shelves is actually almost exactly the right size. I'm just going to have to trim it a little bit and that will fit in there. So with those two measurements I'm going to take this apart, cut those two pieces, and then it will be time to glue this all together. battery died on this through the glue up but um, it's pretty self-explanatory. I put screws anywhere you're not going to see it and then I always like to attach the top during glue up even though sometimes it could be a little tough because you're rushing and trying to get stuff done before the glue starts setting up but the nice thing about attaching the top is if your top comes to your corners properly and lines up with your edge properly um, it's a great way to square up the entire cabinet while you're gluing it up. If that, sometimes when you put these on here, if your cabinet's not square, this will overhang a little bit and you could use the backer to shift it and get it square. That first cabinet um, on the other side of my shop, I have it propped on a rough four foot base. I have a two by three, um, a two by four, and then a half inch piece of ply on top of that, which is about four inches. And now I can start working on the top cabinet. Unfortunately, my ceiling is so low it won't fit on there, so I won't be able to stack this in my shop.